Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of The Dark Parade. Uh, it has been a while, but this is going to be an episode with an honest-to-goodness guest on it. I am joined today by our old pal, Richard Glenn Schmidt, of uh, Hello, This is the Doom Show, even though that show is temporarily on a hiatus. Um, but we talk about that a little bit. Um, but more importantly, what we were talking about is a movie... Uh, called The Japanese Evil Dead, a.k.a. Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder in Hell. Uh, we also debate <laughs> where the emphasis ought to be in that crazy title. But I think you're really going to enjoy this. We had such a good time talking about this movie. Uh, the movie itself is available on Shudder, so I encourage you to seek it out if you have never seen it. I, I So far, everyone who has watched it has had a really good time with it, as long as you can enjoy a lo-fi kind of horror movie, you're really going to get a lot out of it, I think. Uh, so anyway, it's been a while since we've done one of these. Thanks for sticking with me. I plan on doing, uh, these shows, uh, with a lot more regularity to the tune of about one a month. That is me and an actual guest, as opposed to the heart of horror and what you watch in episodes and maybe keep these solo episodes down to one, maybe two a month. Uh, but we'll see how all that goes uh, again. Schedule is always in flux, but you know, getting there. So, uh, thanks for hanging with me during all the, uh, schooling and stuff like that as I was finishing my degree and working on, uh, the, the test to get my license to teach and all of that fun stuff. Uh, and all of that is pretty much done at this point. Uh, so, you know, once I actually start teaching, we'll see how things go. But, uh, as for now, uh, things have reached a nice bit of equilibrium. And so enough of that nonsense. Let's get to the actual show part of the show. Uh, with Richard Glenn Schmidt and uh, Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder in Hell. Enjoy. Speaking of tangentials, <laughs> that, that's the, the way to start this episode. Uh, the shrunken <laughs> tangentials of, <laughs> of our, our subject tonight. Um, obviously with me uh, here is the, the estimable... Richard Glenn Schmidt, known as the notorious RGS around these parts. But when <laughs> when it comes time to talk about weird Asian movies, there is, like, whether it's an Echo Echo Azarak, wh whether it's a Tomie, uh, oh, God help you if you got a Tomie on your hands. Oh, boy. Oh, see, that's going to be rough business for all involved. Um, <laughs> anyway, wh no matter what it is, uh, I, I turn to you because I know that you enjoy a lot of this weird stuff the way I do. But the, here's the thing I don't know, and you've probably told me this, but, I mean, who can possibly be bothered to remember things that people tell you? Um, <laughs> what What is your opinion of the Evil Dead franchise? Uh, something, I, I for some reason, I think that you are negative on at least some mm. of that. Mm. But maybe I'm wrong. Well, maybe I'm thinking of Jamie. Well, first of all, Yes, I have a type. Yes, when it comes to films, these Asian horror movies, I gotta gotta have my my jam. I gotta have my Tommy A T shirt on because people gotta represent. Mm -hmm. Because people still don't appreciate her enough. Like not so much as I mean, she's getting some representation. They got the new Junji Ito series coming out, but man, people have tried so hard to forget the first eight Tommy A movies that exist, and I think it's just because they have terrible distribution. But yeah, yeah. Evil I mean, Dead. Uh, right. I mean, uh, now that uh, <laughs> I just look behind me at the shelf where it's like, look, I got like this whole row of Tomie movies yes. that I've had to source yeah. from various places. But there, there is that one pretty good package that has you know four or five of them together. Yeah. So w wildly out of print. Wild. Is it really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. maybe I can send one of the kids to college on that or something. There you go. Yeah, get that Tomie money. Right. Yeah, Tomie <laughs> uh, is responsible for education. Uh, and doesn't she really teach us all a lesson? I think I think so. She taught us to love. <laughs> Thank you, Tomie, for teaching us to love again. Would that be love, kill, repeat? Yeah. Yeah. To oh, man. That would be a great. It, was that a Tomie subtitle somewhere? Love, kill, repeat? <laughs> it ought to be. <laughs> it should be. Uh, uh, but yeah, Evil, evil Dead. For, uh, I got into they're one of the like the, the touchstones of my horror movie education 
from uh, Stephen King's World of Horror, aka This Is Horror from the '80s, and they were talking so about good. the the rivalry between Wes Craven and Hills Have Eyes and uh, Evil Dead with Sam Raimi was very intriguing to me. And I did it. I did it. Even though they were hyping Evil Dead 2 really hard, I felt I needed to be a completist and do Evil Dead first. So I rented Evil Dead and was just terrified, like completely blown away and was relieved by Evil Dead 2 being so fun and mm. being so I mean, it's more disgusting, but still just not not scary to me. I, I don't know. Maybe as a kid, I just the, the comedy was so great. Um, and I did have a brief period where I didn't love Army of Darkness. Um, I saw it in theaters when it came out in the 90s. And when I wasn't into horror movies, that one was one I was really reluctant to revisit. I just, you know, got bad about it. Mm-hmm. But no, I, I really do appreciate Army of Darkness. But I think my favorite is going to be part one. Uh, the remake. I love the Evil Dead remake so much. Have you seen... Nitpicks. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. A couple of nitpicks, but I, I, like overall, that Evil Dead remake is magic. And Did, of course, the series. I, I'm going to tell you not to watch it, but uh, have you seen the trailer for Evil Dead Rise? I did my thing where I just watched like 20 seconds of it yeah. and I went, yep, that's for me. That okay. is for me. I'm totally down. I, I've seen two trailers for it now and I, I kind of regret seeing the second one, I think. Um, but <laughs> not, not because it made me want to watch the movie less. It was just like we were talking about before we start recording, but you know, it, it is that thing of, Oh, well now I know some beats of the movie that maybe I didn't want to know. Um, Too much. yeah, yeah, but it looks good. It, it looks like it's kind of carrying on in the spirit of that remake of like, let's Whoa. just get gnarly with this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and of course, Ash versus evil dead. I was shocked. Um, by the how great that was I had yeah. a couple of episodes that I felt like they were spinning their wheels trying to get to the same like episode number like episode count as previous seasons but I would forgive those now if I, I if I watch the series I just remember where those were and be like ah whatever but no I I'm a, I guess I'm a big Evil Dead fan <laughs> yeah yeah well it's a shockingly solid franchise you know for obviously the early stuff like Sam Raimi the the Evil Dead movies are where it, he kind of shows off the most and gets oh, yeah. most directory. Uh, other than uh, Drag Me to Hell, you know, Drag Me to Hell was sort of a return to form for him of let me just be weird and gross and throw the camera around all kinds of crazy ways and stuff. Turn turn that amplifier up to eleven because mm-hmm. I remember that movie was fucking loud. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. The only movie um that was louder than that in, in like memory in a recent memory was that last Resident Evil movie, the um Return of Raccoon the last City. One, the, uh, oh, the welcome last to one Raccoon. With, no, the last one with Mila. Oh whoa, 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 the yeah. last one the last proper one with Mila. That thing was ear shredding. <laughs> ear shreddingly loud and was well really funny to me was my friend uh his wife was with us and she fell asleep and slept through like 40 minutes of the last like the last 40 minutes she was unconscious was she drunk no she was just they were in a they're in a band and i think that uh sleeping through loud things and plus I mean, I wouldn't say that movie's bad, but it wasn't holding her attention. <laughs> it's, I man, I have such a love-hate relationship with those Resident Evil Dude, movies. I bought that box set, and it has sat unopened for years. I keep threatening to watch all those, because mm-hmm. I love the first couple of them so mm-hmm. much. And then all of, I, I have found that all of them are at least watchable, uh, even when they get real stupid. Right, and there's almost that moment where it gets stupid enough that it becomes ultra entertaining again. Yep. Yep. And, but I do remember the last couple (laughs) being such nonsense that I was like, I'm not even like, I don't understand the plot enough to think this is stupid. I just don't understand (laughs) it. I'm just confused. What, what happened? Paul W.S. Anderson, what am I supposed to know about these people at this point? He doesn't know. He had no idea. Everyone's a clone. Why is everyone a clone? 
I'll, you know, it's like those last couple of Underworld movies too. Oh yeah. I was yeah. like, I was like, you know, this palette, this color palette can go fuck off right now. <laughs> I don't want to look at this gray shit anymore. Yeah. It's like uh, that zombie movie. Speaking of zombies, uh, Undead. Yeah. That, that Australian one that's getting a, a Blu-ray, and I was like, looking at the screenshot, I was like, ooh, they really made a choice of that color palette. And the uh, the reviewer on uh, Mondo Digital was like, "No, this color palette did not age well. This looks like garbage now." <laughs> yeah, I should go back and revisit that. I, the thing I remember most fun. about Undead was how bonkers the end was. Oh yeah, that it just takes that good. crazy left turn. It's like, oh, okay, well, more people need to go for that. Yeah, you know, there there was that zombie movie. Um, uh, it was called Ravenous. The translated title was Ravenous, mm-hmm. but it was not the uh, the cannibal movie Ravenous. This was a French zombie movie called Ravenous from... Uh, da, 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 da. I know the movie you're talking about. It's been a while, but yes. It was 2017, and it was uh, Les Affames. I, I, I cannot speak French, y'all. Mm-hmm. Um, French language Canadian horror film mm-hmm. from 2017 cannot recommend it enough yeah i it remember that being quite with is that the one with all, like the weird chair thing. piles yes. and stuff yeah yeah yeah. that was cool yes that's a really good wow movie. wow yeah that was a breath of fresh air yeah that yeah, was yeah, great. yeah. It, it's tough to find a really unique zombie movie and that certainly was that felt different enough to warrant its existence unlike yeah. any number of movies starring ving rames that are the Zack Snyder Dawn of the Dead. Because uh, he it feels like he was in three or four that were like, you know, last last days on Earth and zombie apocalypse and stuff like that. Uh, right. In my later years, I am now more uh, House of the Dead than I am uh, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. Oof, boy, that's a choice. <laughs> Although I do like, I like Jurgen Prock now. In that, I think he's having a lot of fun, and the fact that Clint Howard is along for the ride also makes me happy in that. And, and 25 minutes of the movie is them walking across the front yard of a house. Yeah. But the action sequences do not... They are entertaining, oh, yeah. but they're not well done. No, they are. <laughs> they are uh, um, not... I'm trying to think of the phrase. They're uh, they're not a part of the movie, is no. like... <laughs> like Uwe Boll clearly saw the Matrix and said, "Oh, I should do that." Yep, and well, I can I can it's... burn up some running time with this business. So, all right, well, all right. Getting speaking of burning up time with business. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So, I, I for some reason I thought you were softer on Evil Dead too uh, than you are. Um, but I think I saw, did, I, I know I saw Evil Dead first. I've probably told this story before, but there was a place in, uh, my hometown where I live right now and, uh, it was called camera world, but they rented VHS tapes and they had a catalog of every VHS tape you could rent from there. And it was pretty big. And the description of even, and I used to go through as a kid and like circle the movies that I wanted to rent because I didn't have a lot to do. This was before the days of the internet. I couldn't just, you know, be on a bulletin board or, uh, and, and talk about, you know, slash fiction and whatnot. Um, and the uh, description for Evil Dead was the goriest movie ever made. And I was like, well, then I have to see that because I like some gory stuff. And the thing I wasn't prepared for, because it was, you know, depending on your bar, like it's a a, a pretty bloody movie and all um, and, and gory and whatnot. But I wasn't prepared for how intense it was. And it felt very aggressive. Like that movie felt mean spirited, like it wanted to scare you and not in the fun house kind of like hey didn't we all have a good time kids kind of way but in the like you know i hope you're happy kind of way <laughs> like at the yeah. end of it you're like oh i don't feel good like how much of it was the zeitgeist of like really cruel 
like late seventies, early eighties. Like it's it's like predicting things like Maniac and shit, like with that intensity. Yeah. But also like how much of that is just the the pure torture for everyone involved making that because it's like it was basically Texas Chainsaw Massacre but cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, and maybe not as many decomposing piles of awful <laughs> right it was just, it was just disgusting sticky blood on everything yeah but it, it, yeah it, they but were trying to be funny it was it's like supposed yeah. to be slapstick well and that's where they got with two finally like they yeah. they turned that dial you know over to let's just have a good time and and that's fine by me i think evil dead 2 is one of the like not just a personal touchdown, but I think it's one of those tipping points in movies where it was like, here's how you do a horror comedy, you know, like yeah. that and reanimator are the two movies that are like, Oh, okay. this is how you do it. You know, like don't, yep. don't play it as a comedy. Just let the comedy come out of the ridiculousness of the situation. And so when, you know, Bruce Campbell is attaching a chainsaw to his hand, it, you're like, this is nonsense, but I love every second of it, you know? Um, and so like ourselves, there was another fan of the evil dead movies and his name was Shinichi Fukazawa. Yeah. He's very motivated, very motivated young man. Mm -hmm. And I had heard of bloody muscle bodybuilder in hell for a while before I ever saw it. And uh what what was your experience with like was the, is this one you've seen a number of times or are you No, this was um this was was when you're like digging under the bottom of the barrel looking for those other Japanese horror films because I'm I'm like loving that sweet spot of late 90s through early 2000s. I'm like really honing in on there. And then just the frustration you find out that oh, there's horror movies from every single decade from Japan, but so many of them are either lost or the people who own them have no interest mm -hmm. in putting them out or they're asking for too much money and distributors are like, no nah, dude, these, these Blu-ray companies are like, no, nah, we're not paying you that crazy amount of money. Yeah. Um, so anytime something like pops up that's new to me from 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 Asia from the 80s, 90s, 70s, I'm excited, especially if it's um, I, I swear, like the 90s was something magical was happening over there. I don't know what what was going on, but um, I had read that this existed and I never expected to see it because mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple other short ones. Uh, shorter movies this is a uh, this clocks in at 62 minutes there's a couple more that are around an hour or under an hour from the 80s that feel like um just wall-to-wall weirdo splatter fests um I'm, I'm struggling to remember the names of the other ones now um maybe i'll come up with those before we're <laughs> done talking sure sure but yeah yeah i i've 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 found some of those, but this one had not popped up yet. So this is, is from my first viewing. I just watched this for the first time last night. Oh, that's great. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. So Shinichi, hold on. I'm going to get his name wrong every time. Shinichi Fukazawa, because I want to say Fusakawa uh, for no good reason other than I'm, I'm foolish. And I, I think I may have had a series of small strokes. Um, oh, but Shinichi... Fine. Shinichi Fukuzawa basically copped to the fact that he was like, hey, I saw Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, and I thought those movies were rad. And I thought, what if I made that <laughs> only in Japan? And for a long time, like I had always heard of it as the Japanese Evil Dead. Right. And which is sort of the alternate title of it, which is a weird alternate title just to call yourself the Japanese evil dead. But that's how I'd known about it. And it, like you, it was one of those movies that I'd heard about, but I didn't ever expect to see because there wasn't an official release. In fact, the first official release of it internationally, at least wasn't until 2017. So yeah. 
you know, like Shutter picked it up not so long ago, and so yeah. now like everybody can go see it, and I encourage you to. Great. Yeah, I, I was like, I can't find it. All right, I bought the DVD, and you're like, cool, but it's for free here. I'm like, all right, I bought the DVD, <laughs> and then it was on Shutter, and I'm like, I have I have every way to watch this. Yeah. I mean, someone but, just emailed it to me. <laughs> but I mean, great because if Shinichi Fukuzawa gets a few extra bucks off of this, like I would love it. I don't. He does not appear to have a long filmography. He made one other horror movie. Well, one other movie that happens to be a very unusual looking movie. I just watched a trailer for it today called Violator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks bonkers. Right, and so. Bonkers. I would I would love for him to make more movies because it seems like he's got a really weird sense of like a weird aesthetic almost. But so he he doesn't have a ton of money and wants to make Evil Dead, but he, so the the result of that is what if the Evil Dead was in Japan, not in the woods, but in kind of the suburbs. And you had fewer people. Yeah. Uh, to the tune small, of three. Small cast and crew. Yeah. 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 I mean, it feels so homemade. And I think that's part of its charm. You know, yeah. like, like that's one of the things I actually like about it is that it does feel very much like it's a guy and his pals putting on a high school play based on the Evil Dead. It's like Evil Dead fan fiction that somehow made it to regional theater. <laughs> I, I I love the the because it looks like it was shot on Super 8 but I don't know because they're adding VHS effects mm -hmm. and, and there's a couple shots in it that were clearly shot later on a, I think on a different camera completely yeah. that I, I don't know what this was shot on I would love to know but for for most of the movie it looks like like eight millimeter film mm -hmm. and then some post production stuff via video. Right. Some additional grain that they added. Yeah. It's and, something. And so Shinichi uh, Fukuzawa does double duty here playing both Shinji and Naoto, his father. Yeah. And if you thought for two seconds that, the movie was not, in fact, based on the Evil Dead. One look at Naoto's outfit in the opening of this movie, because it just <laughs> opens in a living room, yep. where Naoto, uh, who played by Shinichi Fukuzawa, uh, is in the blue chambray work shirt, the you know the ash pants and shoes and everything. Like it, it looks like ash, and um, so you might be fooled into believing this is just going to be like, oh, we're going to start with Ash in the cabin. Oh, no, no. Shinichi nope. Fukuzawa has way more up his sleeve than that. And <laughs> so it's just this woman saying, like, I love you. How could you leave me for some other woman? And she freaks out and tries to stab him. And he's like, aha, you try to stab me. I'll stab you instead. <laughs> And so he does. He just straight up murders this woman. I mean, granted, she seems to be unhinged, but just murders someone. And rather than say, call the authorities, he's like, ah, how about I just bury her under this plywood in the, the living room of my house or her house, one presumes, I guess. And no, it's got to be theirs because Shinji later is like, well, this is a house that my dad owned. Right. So maybe he was putting this lady up? Because it's hard to believe that Naoto <laughs> went on to, like, court Shinji's mother, and they just, like, hung out and ate popcorn and watched TV over the dead body of this woman. <laughs> yeah, I have to admire this movie's resistance of any kind of setup. <laughs> like, I, you know, even well, just, like, a it? shot... A shot of her, like, of them moving in, or mm -hmm. a shot of her, like, finding out about it, or or any establishing anything. This movie's like, nah, nah. Right. Who needs it? 
you here to have a good time? You here to learn, nerd? <laughs> Who needs exposition? My son's going to be a bodybuilder. Uh, How dare you? Dude, we'll get to it. There is there is a moment in this movie that truly is on par with Bruce Willis saying groovy. And it's not Shinji saying groovy, which also happens. But, did you say Bruce Willis? Or did you say... Did I say Bruce, Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis, <laughs> Star of Die Hard, and Evil Dead. Yeah, ba dabba doo ba dabba dee ba dabba doo ba That's my Ben Stiller show reference for you guys. Everyone said, come to the cabin, have a few laughs. <laughs> Groovy, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do an impression of that man, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, you heard the best I got. Um, <laughs> but yeah so Bruce Campbell uh, saying groovy is what I meant obviously groovy baby <laughs> yeah that's gotta be it I'm confused about Japanese floors too cause like he he has a, he has he has an axe and then no he's a shovel then, then an, an axe. axe whereas I would think it would be axe then shovel to get on the floor but he lifts up the big floor tile mm-hmm. with the shovel then he just starts taking the axe to the floor and somehow her body's in there. I don't understand. Yeah, and there's a thing where the all of her blood just gets sucked up into this oh. like key pendant. Yep, yep, yep. To let you know that there's some some bona fide curse happening. Um oh. which is is also pretty good. Uh and yeah, and and so <laughs> That's kind of your setup. That it's just, hey, you know, this murder happened. Cut to years later when Shinji, who we will learn is the son of the guy what murdered this lady, is just spending a few minutes working out, man. You know, and but and here's what's hilarious to me about all of this is that he's not super ripped. Mm -mm. You know, like, he's in good shape, and he's got muscles, but it's not, like, a Stallone or Schwarzenegger. Not even that. Like, it's not even a a knockoff. It's not, like, he is just a guy who works out a bunch. Yeah, he's in that frustrating body type that a lot of people who spend a lot of time at the gym without going for the you know the artificial means yeah you know like they they end up getting really lean and they get really fucking strong and they look good but they're not getting the bulk they want and so it's like i'm sure that burns up a lot of like they get so pissed off that they're not like riggedy ripped you know but it's like (laughs) nah dude you're just making your body look natural so stick with it do you, know what, do you know what I like on men? I like um, big and natural. <laughs> big and natural. And I, the thing that's funny is when he puts on a shirt, he just looks like a dude. You know, yes. it's not like his shirt is straining to contain the muscles oh beneath God. or anything. <laughs> like he puts on a polo at one point and it's like, you just look like you're shopping for rutabagas at the store or whatever. Like you, you're just a guy. Ex- except all right so what sets off the the events of the movie is he gets a call from his ex-girlfriend mika uh yep. as played yep. by uh, masaki kai and she calls him up and says like hey do you still have that picture of your dad's house uh and he's like yeah i probably got it around here somewhere and she's like great will you meet me for a stroll in the park where you can walk around in a shirt and not look muscular at all. And we'll have a little chit chat. He shops at lean and formless. I mean, it, it shocked me that for a movie (laughs) in which the muscles play such an important part that you're not showing them off that much. Uh, I mean, yeah, you get the initial workout scene, but after that, I guess you're just hiding it. Like why, don't start with a showstopper, I guess, is the idea. <laughs> You're going to wait till the end. He's, 
waiting, just waiting for literally any reason to take that shirt off. Anything. It's anything. Oh, oh, did you sneeze? Here, have my shirt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which begs the but question. Okay. Where do you put the emphasis on the title? It's bloody muscle body builder in hell. Is it bloody, bloody, mussy, bloody muscle body builder? Or is it bloody muscle bodybuilder in hell? Yeah, I think the colon. I think we I think we need bloody muscle colon. No, that doesn't make sense either. <sighs> this is a tough one. I mean, did we ever find a, a Japanese horror movie title generator, like random generator? Because <laughs> yeah. this feels like one uh, akin to, of course, Hero Hero Ghost Show. You know? Yeah. B- bloody muscle body. Uh, for me, it's bloody muscle bodybuilder as kind of one idea. Yeah. That is the the constituent phrase to to use uh, English teacher parlance, and then you could put the colon in hell. Ooh, there you go. But it's it's a nonsense title, and I kind of love it because it doesn't make much sense. Because they don't go to hell; they're not in hell at any point during this. They're in a a uh, a type of hell, a hellish scenario. Like, if you just took the word muscle out of it, bloody bodybuilder in hell makes way Even more better. sense than bloody muscle bodybuilder in hell. It's it's the addition of muscle of like, okay, is the muscle bloody? Are you talking about the muscles of the bodybuilder? Oh, wait. Are, are there other types of bodybuilders? Like, I you see. could do uh, a strong torso bodybuilder in hell. <laughs> Build up your knees. <laughs> Core strength bodybuilder in hell. Who's <laughs> just all about the, the calisthenics. Pilates. <laughs> yeah, right. He's... Bloody Pilates. <laughs> hey, there's the, there's the sequel. Disgusting yoga bodybuilder in hell. Oh, God. Um, Zombie ass. No, way, that's something else. Yeah, that is. Oh, is it ever? <laughs> uh, a Gucci, you mad genius. Or is that... Uh, that might not be a Gucci. I think it is, though. Uh, I just wanted to drop that title. I, I'll never watch that. Zombie-ass Toilet of the Dead. That's advanced. It's... I mean, it's not great, but it it's silly, and it's it, it knows what it is. Like, it is, a, better. it is a movie in which you are... It, it's... It's not quite a pink movie, but it is it's, definitely it's Laura Brown. Yeah, but you're definitely showing off like here are you know pretty Japanese ladies in skimpy attire and also there's going to be a lot of farting <laughs> inexplicably. <laughs> <laughs> which is a thing that happens. Um I I love that he his so his ex Samika calls him up and they go on this little like hangout sesh so he can give her that picture. And he's, she's like, what are you doing? He's like, I quit my job. Okay. What are you doing at all? He's like, working out. He gives, he flexes for her and kind of yep. gives that bicep a little peck. Like, <laughs> look at this baby. And she's like, well, so that's all you're doing? He's, and he's like, yeah, my dad died, left me a bunch of money. I'm just trying to figure shit out. That's all. I'm just hanging out, working out, you know, trying to get my head right that's all and i like rarely in movies do you see uh, such an aimless protagonist (laughs) (laughs) zen he's very zen at this moment zero ambition to do anything or accomplish anything like he is just he's just floating through life man and mika on the other hand is like well you know how i like paranormal stuff well i've been like full-on investigating that and that's why i wanted you to meet up with me because you have this picture of the house that's got like a ghost image in it and he's like yeah what else i don't really care uh it's not my thing i don't think it's really haunted i don't believe in that nonsense you know what i believe in working out yeah that is that is what i believe in living healthy don't smoke right no hope and dope uh, as I've said already today, and but then he's just like, so, um, are you 
are you seeing anybody? And she's like, nah, not really. And he's like, oh, really? Is that so? Because I don't know if I mentioned that I'm not doing Jack right now. So if you want to <laughs> hang out or something. and he's not, he's not doing Jack. He is Jack. <laughs> is he ever? Hell yeah. I mean, not so you'd notice in the polo he's wearing, <laughs> which does nothing to show off any of these sweet, sweet muscles. Um he is quick to point out that uh, when she starts to light up a Virginia Slim, and he's like, "Every time you do that, it depletes your body of seventy-five milligrams of vitamin C." That blew my mind. <laughs> that that really blew my mind. That yeah. was like, if there's any reason to not smoke, that's it. Uh huh. And she's like, "Uh, okay, whatever, weirdo." So let's go to uh, your dad's house. And I'm going to take with us this guy named Mizuguchi. Who, uh, I believe this is Masahiro Kai. Um, And he is a psychic. Who is coming to the house along with them. uh, To, you know, see what's up, right? So this is our trio of psychic investigators to go into this house, not again in some far remote forest, not in some, you know, abandoned ghost town. It's just in a neighborhood. It's just a creepy house. It's yeah. I mean, if by creepy, you mean it needs a good mow and somebody to clean up some of the garbage out of the yard, but that's it. Yeah. 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 But that's kind of it. I love Mizuguchi even before all the shit goes down. I love this guy. Like he's the most serious character I've seen in a film in a long time. Like uh, if you can, if you can pause it and zoom in and you can actually see he has mega bummer tattooed on his forehead. <laughs> like, he's so like, this isn't funny. This is, this is the spiritual world. Well, Shinji though, who, by the way, not driving the car. M- Mika is handling that. He's just hanging out. Having They'd never a... get there. They'd <laughs> never get there if he was driving. <laughs> just stop at random parks. And, you know, the sun gives you vitamin D. That's important for all your muscles. So, oh, um, But he's drinking like energy drinks or something. And yep. trying to give them to Mizuguchi. who's like, no, no, no. I don't drink that stuff. He's like, whatevs, dude. This... <laughs> You know, like, this is good for me. This is good for muscles. And (laughs) so they show up at this place, and it is definitely one of the more evil dead moments of the movie. Because you get, like, the camera pan across all of their faces as they're looking up at this house. That looks like a totally normal suburban house, by the way. And there's like a swing that's moving. It doesn't do the stop like it does in the original evil dead, but you get that would sweet. Right. <laughs> I get, I can't believe they didn't go for that gag. If you're going to do it all, do it all. You know? Right. Cause I mean, it goes so far into evil dead, you know, aping that why would you not? But anyway, it doesn't. And Mizuguchi <laughs> takes one look at this house and is like, I have to tell you all this house is fucked. <laughs> I feel a strong evil in this house. And Shinji's just like, all right, dude, let's roll. Yeah, he ain't afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> he is because not... they don't exist. Right, to, right. He, he can't see them, you know. Uh, I, the line is something like, you know, I can't see them, so to me, they don't exist. I don't believe in molecules. Uh, honestly, the thing I told her about the vitamin C, <laughs> I can't see that either. I don't believe in that, but I heard that. <laughs> How do magnets work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Shinji and Shaggy 2 Dope trying to figure out the grand mysteries of life. <laughs> um, <laughs> violent J sitting this one out. Um, but yeah, so they they finally go in the house after some wandering around, which seems strange for a movie that is, again, you know, 60 minutes. There's a fair amount of just meandering, which yeah. feels appropriate for Shinji. Or maybe it's, Shinichi Fujikawa. The movie is also in character. <laughs> right. 
So, one of the things, one of the only decorations in the house is a child's rendering <laughs> of some woman's face. There's a couple of drawings of, of this woman in the house, and I don't know who did them. I don't know where they like where they came from. Um, there's it's very sparse. Yeah, as of course in a, an abandoned house would be, but it's even it's even more sparse. And but it, like like it's so sparse that it makes the stuff that's there even stranger. <laughs> right. That whoever left the house because they weren't there before, at least not that we saw. Yeah. So one presumes that somebody did these child's drawings and then came to hang them up in this abandoned house. But there's no other graffiti or anything because this is clearly the home of filmmaker Shinichi Fukuzawa. <laughs> uh, or a place I, I that love they rented. The, I, I love the way it's shot, though. Like, that's mm-hmm. the thing. Like, there's some real style to, to this section where um, the little like glimpses of this house and because of all that grain that film grain that's all over it you get like this found footage vibe from it from like almost instantly yeah the the thing i i kept thinking about the decor of this house if you remember the movie scrooged there is a point where bill murray sees a picture that alfrey woodard's child drew of santa claus and mrs claus and he goes grace who drew this and he says well my kid did he says right how many fingers does mrs claus have and she says 11 he goes right it's crap get rid of it and tears it down (laughs) and that's how i felt about all these drawings is that uh they would rightfully be torn down by any self-respecting bill murray that happened to be passing through but uh but you're right though i think a lot of these shots as they're kind of wandering around and exploring the house it's a lot of like hey we're going to stand in a doorway in a dark room with light behind us so that we get good silhouettes and stuff and a lot of rainy esque angles and that kind of thing like again this is we are doing evil dead so we're doing a lot of like high angles and um, you know, interesting camera placement and all that. Like it's, if you're going to rip off Sam Raimi, he did a great job, you know? Um, and it looks pretty good, but then we get to the site of the murder and <laughs> Shinji hangs out to look at himself in the mirror for a bit, for a long bit. <laughs> it's, I, you know, I thought they were going to do the Evil Dead 2 gag of, like, having the, the one actor that looks kind of like Bruce Campbell, or Bruce Willis, for that matter. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, you do the cheat over the shoulder so it looks like the mirror image is talking to him and whatnot. But yeah. instead, he's just hanging out, like, checking his hair and making sure that he's perfectly quaffed. And meanwhile, uh, our psychic is uh mizuguchi is in this room he's like this is where it happened this is this this is where all the bad stuff went down and then you know we kind of get into the meat of the movie which is he just passes out at a certain point he's just whoa yeah there goes the day he kind of like invokes the spirit to come forward to to Mm. talk about it's like he knows that it has a grudge and it's pissed off and yet you know he calls forth and the ghost kind of like sees shinji comes out of the mirror yeah to like get him and we see this great shot of the the spirit with its creepy ghostly hand over his shoulder and that's when the clock this tiny little plastic clock falls off the wall and bangs our boy Mizuguchi in the head, and and he falls over, you know, with his uh, mild bruising on the back of his head. <clears throat> well, and we see the ghost on on Shinji's shoulder, looking at yeah. him. It's, it's it, like, oh, it's pretty good. It's a good creepy scene. Other than the clock falling off the wall, which literally falls off the wow. wall, and then later he's like, "Well, I was standing in the middle of the room. How how could that clock have hit me?" And I was like, "Dude, it didn't." 
Um, <laughs> you could throw that clock at someone as hard as you could, and it would probably hurt them. But this clock just went. Bleh. Yeah. <laughs> Bleh. <laughs> and, but but Misaguchi is pretty quick to be like. By the way, it was the ghost who threw that clock at me. It wasn't you know and like by the I saw the ghost the whole deal, and so he asks for the key because when he comes to he's in the back of the car. They're like, hey, we, you know. You got hit bonked on the head. We were afraid you might have amnesia or something. And so we took you to the back of the car, and we were going to take you back to town for potentially medical help. Or let you sleep it off. Maybe not wake up. Right, right. You, well, you know what they say about concussions. Like get, get plenty of rest. <laughs> <laughs> and so Visaguchi is like, well, I need to get back into the house. And uh, Shinji, in an act of heroism, is just like, here's the key, bro. We'll be out here y'all if you need anything. Uh, and so the, Mizuguchi goes back through, you know, scopes out some creepy dolls looking for the the ghost, the source of the haunting. And, uh, and finds it. Yeah, he finds the knife. Uh-huh. And then he finds the ghost who... Uh tries to kill him with the knife that's right uh who is full-on evil dead like wide eyes <laughs> pale skin although there there is that kind of there is still that japanese trope of the dark long hair like it, it looks like a japanese yeah. ghost but by way of evil dead you know so it's kind of an interesting blend of those two ideas you know the the two artistic ideas and then she says something that every woman I've ever dated uh, has said, which is, my body is rotten to the core. And give me yours. Hey, whoa. Hey, that, that had a turn in it, you know? Like, mm -hmm. started sad, then it got glad. <laughs> and then, then it got sexy. And so she just stabs <laughs> Mizuguchi in the chest. Uh, and, and it's revealed that he's stabbing himself. Wow, 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 wow. Right. But then he looks up and he sees kind of the woman that Naoto murdered and she drops the <clears throat> necklace into his mouth. Yep. And this seems to be the thing. Like if you get full on possessed that like it's the, the necklace that invades your body. Like that is the talisman that turns you into a, a zombie, a ghost zombie or, or a vessel for, this spirit and so anyway eventually uh, um shinji and mika are like hey mizuguchi's really been in there a while should we go yeah. look for him and shinji's like eh i mean i guess we're, we're running out of energy drinks here <laughs> right we gotta get back to town because <laughs> pretty soon my vitamin c levels are gonna drop below uh the ideal level um, and so they go inside and they, they find the bloody knife and they're like, Hey, you think something could have happened in here? And then they find, uh, Mizuguchi yes. who is all <clears throat> pale and, you know, bleeding from his chest on account of having been stabbed there, uh, theoretically by the ghost, but by himself, uh, yeah, I, I I love, I love when he's like, get out of here before I die. I love that warning. That's so good. Yeah. And so then we get some good old fashioned stop motion as the necklace that has been dropped into his mouth crawls out of his mouth and goes into his eyeball. And it's rad. It is that is pretty special i love stop motion in a movie especially a movie that can't really afford good stop motion yeah they can't make it look good but they did it mm -hmm. and so shinji is like mika i suggest we get out of here <laughs> and so they're taken off but they can't get out on account of acting mostly uh <laughs> yeah, yeah he's like, oh the doors won't open and whatnot and then Mizuguchi resurrects 
and yeah, he's is fast now, boy. Right, he's all pale and starts chasing him with a knife. Uh, stabs Shinji uh, in the hand, and I was like, "Oh, are they going to do the Evil Dead possessed hand yep. thing?" You thinking that's what's going to happen? Uh, but instead, uh, he then turns his attention to Mika, and it says that he's going to eat her. And then in maybe the most effective effect of the movie, Shinji takes the knife and stabs Mizuguchi in the back of the head, which forces his eyeball out of the, the right eyeball out of its socket towards Mika, Man. then pulls the knife out, which sucks the eyeball back into its socket. That's like something out of brain dead, like something out of dead alive. That was pretty freaking cool dude yeah it's really i mean is it the it, it's not a great special effect but it is great for this ultra cheap movie yeah and it's yeah. and like the, the thing i like most about this movie is how ambitious it, it is for being so cheap like it is it is doing the Raimi camera work it is doing these gore effects it's doing the stop motion it's yeah. doing all of that stuff for for all of the little tiny tiny amounts of like video effects or like animation they do for all that stuff there's a hundred times more practical goopy gore weird shit and there's stuff in this movie that i've never seen in other movies Mm -hmm. there's a couple of moments where i'm like yeah they're aping evil dead but in some ways they're doing it wrong quote unquote mm-hmm. and in other ways they're doing it right by coming up with their own thing because we fully have like later we just have like freaking supermarket hamburger come to life that's outrageously gross to look yeah. at yeah so oh man so after they stab Mizuguchi he kind of goes down for a minute and they're like, all right, we got to get out of here. And so then Mizuguchi, of course, gets back up because that's what zombies do. Uh, or possess zombies. I don't know. Not quite deadites. I don't know. P- people possessed by blood-infused necklaces, let's right. say. Those people. Not to right. generalize. Right. Not to unfairly paint everyone with that brush. Who has ever been possessed by a blood-infused necklace? <laughs> but, but he chases after him. There's a pretty good gag with uh, a nail on the wall where they, like Shinji, flips him around and it stabs him through the hand. And uh, like they, uh, he tries to get him through the room. They finally like put up a blockade uh, after punching him in the face and jamming his fingers in the door and and Shinji there's a great moment here because again Shinji is a terrible protagonist and he's not quite as hapless as Ash where he's just constantly being battered you know it's not the physical gags he just doesn't want any part of this and seems real put upon that he has to be dealing with it. Cause at, at one point Mika is like, what are we going to do? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> this all stinks. We're, we're, we're dead. And he's not, he's not a great hero. No, he's barely. He's not even the, it's not even a lowercase H. No. It, <laughs> it, it, he's just like, what do you think we ought to do? Uh, he asked Mika that. And she's like, I don't know. And then finally they get some help from beyond as naoto the father shows up to be like son you are muscly well done <laughs> looking looking ripped son <laughs> right uh, that Looks polo small. that polo is doing nothing for you i you know i love the analog so dad dad's on the little tv mm-hmm. warning him and that's like like the tape player the, the 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 little uh, cassette player from Evil Dead, but yeah, so we're stepping up with the technology. And he basically says, "Hey, did you see b- the beginning of the movie?" No. Well, here's what happened. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> there was this lady I, I was uh, having an affair with, and then 
one thing led to another and bada bing bada boom i killed her and so your friend mizuguchi and shinji's like he's not my friend he's just a weird guy that i drove here with he's like whatever this guy is now possessed by the spirit of this woman i killed and she's nuts and worse she enjoys inflicting pain because of all the pain that she's been living with all this time which again very japanese idea like when they talk about grudges and stuff like that in this movie i just start slapping my flippers together because i'm like oh it's a japanese horror movie now and (laughs) but naoto much like shinji uh, the apple doesn't fall fall far from the tree because he's like don't worry about this son it's not your fault it's that psychic you brought with you it's his fault because his psychic energy yeah thanks for giving her powers asshole like bringing this guy bringing this joker along like you couldn't have brought somebody with no talents you know yeah yeah and shinji's like i knew it wasn't my fault and they're like high-fiving through the tv (laughs) (laughs) and he says so what you've got to do uh again much like the the tape from evil dead the real to real um he's like you have to dismember mizuguchi and also to defeat this you have to go to the basement because what you Mm. need to defeat the evil in this house is in the basement keep that in mind ladies and gentlemen uh-huh keep that's that in mind that's important it's what we call foreshadowing <laughs> and so sure enough they've got to you know take care of mizuguchi who you know busts in on them as soon as they try to get out of this room he comes in and grabs mika and is like i'm gonna strangle her and you're gonna watch lol yeah but uh, Shinji grabs the shovel that has been laying around and ends up battling Mizuguchi with said shovel uh, uh, until he finally gets him against the wall and like gives the shove to the neck and decapitates Mizuguchi. And Lovely. There is a papier mache head. <laughs> Oh man, I feel for this because I made a paper mache head of my head for a horror movie we made one time and <laughs> ended up looking like not even the bizarro version <laughs> of me. It looked like uh, a child's interpretation of the, the bizarro. It did not look like a man in his late 20s, early 30s made it in any known universe. <laughs> I... But th- So this one's better than mine. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll concede to that this time. <laughs> <laughs> that's one for you bloody muscle <laughs> bodybuilder in hell one for you guy who made a movie people will actually watch <laughs> but it's but it's a yeah it, like is it a fakey <clears throat> head yes but what's hilarious is after he goes to revive Mika who has been choked out by Mizuguchi Uh, He comes back in, and the head is still sitting on top of the shovel, which is embedded in the wall, but the body is gone. And he's Mm -hmm. like, hey, that's curious. And sure enough, the body, you know, attacks. And oh yeah, then Mika is the one who grabs the axe, and there is a full-on, you know, throw the axe to shinji in slow motion and it is like because again this movie is done on the cheap you don't see the whole axe for some of the shot so it's just somebody like holding it and moving it in front of the camera and then when you do see the camera flying it's clearly somebody that just kind of gave it a toss and then he you know grabs it out of the air but it's so good like I, but I, I, I love the fact that you can see the seams here of like oh this is how they had to achieve this effect is right. they did this shot and then they did this shot and then somebody handed him the axe here and that's how they strung this together to make it look like this dramatic moment of her throwing the they, axe they, for, they forgot the fishing line and they didn't want to really throw that axe for fear of hurting someone or probably 
uh, clipping a wall, <clears throat> clipping a wall or something in Shinji's house. But she's like, no, 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 do not throw that axe for real. Do <laughs> not. I, I got, do I'm not trying to get my security it. deposit back, bro. I can't, you can't be throwing tools around in here. This is a rental. <laughs> right. My landlord's going to be here in a week. All right. We got to have all this cleaned up. <laughs> oh, that would be a lot of cleanup. Uh-huh. Um, but sure enough, he hacks up Mizuguchi with uh, with the axe. And it's a good, like, Evil Dead style. Here are a bunch of body parts and some of them are kind of wiggling and jiggling and stuff. And it looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And, and Shinji's like, all right, let's burn this corpse. Give me your lighter. And she's like, dude, you, you told me to, like, give up smoking. So I did. And he's like, okay, good for you. But now we can't burn this stupid body. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, worth pointing out, Mizuguchi's head is giving him some smack talk at the at the same time. Uh, tell him, like, oh, you're all going to die here. And also... Uh, Shinji shows Mizuguchi's head the <clears throat> child's drawing the child's rendering and is like did you draw this? Is this you? <laughs> and, <clears throat> I didn't sign it but yeah bro right oh, like and limited edition um, is that an oh is that an NFT? I love it <laughs> so alright finally Shinji is like oh, okay we gotta do what my father's head on the tv said which is to go into the basement and get the thing that's going to help us defeat the evil and yep. worth pointing out earlier in the movie he said this is the house i used to uh work out like i've, I've got a bunch of workout equipment in the basement but he looks over in the corner he sees all that and he's like well it can't be that probably it's this shotgun <laughs> and so this is where we get the full on quick cuts of him grabbing shotgun shells, put them in his pocket, put them in his uh, breast pocket, his jeans pockets, loading up the shotgun, gives it a pump and does the groovy. And I loved it. Yes. I, because of the manga, I am a hero mm -hmm. and some other various, uh, uh, manga about guns like people how hard it is to own a gun in Japan as well as own the bullets to said gun and how you have to register it like you kind of like have to register your gun within an inch of its life yeah like it is one of the most strict countries on earth for gun laws and the thought of this shotgun just being in the basement and then shotgun shells just littered on the floor. I'm like, nah, some, some government official, as soon as your dad dies, is going to come and collect that shit. <laughs> like, oh, by the way, it's illegal for this to be not stored in a safe. Also, the uh, bullets have to be stored in a separate safe from the gun. <laughs> Dude, what follows is the greatest scene in the movie. <clears throat> Boy, howdy. Where, and this, this I think is where you're talking about like the movie gets some of the Evil Dead stuff wrong but in getting it wrong it really carves out a really unique identity for Magic. itself magical so with this shotgun he's like hey we need to go basically shoot the body parts into dust or whatever into a fine into paste chunks. yeah and they go upstairs and Mika is like, hey, some of the body parts are missing. And he's like, huh, you don't say. I wonder what happened to that. Then they are attacked, Richard. <laughs> by not just these random body parts, but the body parts have fused together in new and interesting ways. So... See? I'm thinking, I'm thinking another, another source of inspiration was Bride of Reanimator. Mm, yeah. Body parts, you know, few, the, the hand by the wrist fused to the ankle and the foot and other parts happening. Yeah, it's, it, the head is on a hand. <clears throat> There's the hand foot combo. 
and this is where it gets like real Evil Dead Two, where the foot keeps hitting him in the face as he. I mean, he's really oh, just man. hitting himself in the face, but it's really pretty fun. And she is being attacked by Mika's being attacked by the head with the hand, and they do a couple of different tricks to make that work, but it's pretty good. Um, sometimes it's just like the papier, papier mache head on a hand. Sometimes it's like the actor literally resting his head on his hand and yes. kind of cheating the angle. <laughs> and well, then well. there's the one shot where it's like on the ceiling above her and drops onto her where they basically put the hand on the ceiling and then superimpose the head. So that when it drops, they just superimpose that the image of the head growing as it comes closer to her. And it's oh, super man. inventive. It's really clever. You know, I'd forgotten about that shot. And as soon as you said it, I can just imagine it in my head. That is great. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so good. Yeah. It's it's such a clever like use of no money of how do you make a a horror movie that has all this creative stuff in it on no cash like it, it is one of the finest examples i think doug tilly actually did this movie on no budget nightmares at some point and it falls into that category of like there there's no money behind this but it's so uh like there's a real vision behind it yeah. and um I, I like i have such fondness for that like you know if a movie tries there are so many big budget movies that don't try half as hard as this one does yeah. to be creative and fun. Like, how does it, like, does it, does it come from the, the, the planning stage? Does it come from like, they were storyboarding it and let their imaginations run wild and then constructed how to do it later? Or was it like weird? I've been making movies since I was a kid and all this know how kind of like grew like the way Sam Raimi mm -hmm. did it where they, you know, they made all this stuff, or did he have a, a, a book? Like, you know, how to achieve special effects book, you know, like, it's so, it's so fun. I, uh, on a totally dumb side note, like, I'm really glad this was innocent. Like, this is a very uh, innocent movie. There's no weird, sexy stuff to it. Like, yeah. But, like, imagine, like, the, uh, the if the entrails of a virgin uh, that director had made this like yeah. they wouldn't have wasted that penis cuz that that psychic guy probably had one and he could make it into a long tentacle that sci <laughs> that psychic guy probably had a penis is the other shirt i almost wore tonight <laughs> like sometimes you you think back of all the hundreds and thousands of movies you watched and you're like yeah, I've seen entrails of a virgin. Yeah, yeah. And then that's all you don't you don't know what else to do with that information, but hopefully you'll be able to work it into a podcast with one <laughs> Bo Ransdell. I've I've seen multiple guinea pig movies, and I have no. I know. I don't understand why that ever happened. I um, mean, and I watch the Japanese ones. I'm not like you kids. You kids got the American ones now. Oh my gosh. Right, you you kids with your you know l uh, more refined taste, you you <laughs> not the raw stuff. I was like, it's like when you get the Mexican cokes so with the pure stuff, the pure sugar. <laughs> so, all right, where are we? Oh, so after <laughs> this thing, the head falls on Mika. It bites her in the neck. Uh, and so she collapses because she's bleeding out her neck. Also, not a, not a bad effect. And he's like, whoa, what am I going to do? I got to get out of here <laughs> yet again. Goes to the door, sure enough, still trapped. Then realizes that all the blood from Mika and from Mizuguchi, all of it is being like absorbed into the floor. And then out comes the real monster of the movie which looks great i thought yeah 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 uh, i mean it's all kind of primer gray and that's maybe <laughs> not as great but um it's like this skeleton face in a flannel shirt kind of situation that busts up through the floor and then the sentient ground beef that you mentioned earlier 
with the necklace on it starts crawling to it to kind of reconstitute into this version of the woman who died up to and including like the necklace uh yeah. going into it but it like it it basically forms this big goomba head version of like it looks like the the woman we saw murdered was about to be scanned like in the movie scanners where her head's about <laughs> to blow up but it's the moment before the explosion but it's the very second before the explosion yeah she she's super tall and she's super grotesque and it's like really they they didn't have the actress back or they had never they had no intention they yeah. just wanted her to be more monstrous um i thought about the uh the scene in evil dead when one of the deadites is killed presumably and then the giant monster just climbs out of its back yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It just and it doesn't look like any of the other creatures it looks like its own like fleshy skull monster thing and that's why i'm like that scene i think really stuck with the director when he saw that yeah it, it's right that, that kind of cornflake ky version of of just goo um yeah and and at this point mika also gets up and so it's shinji versus mika versus this other creature and in the maybe the least innocent point of the movie is mika grabbing him by the balls and lifting him up yeah yeah, and that, that was uh, I felt that felt pointed. That felt like a, a, a fuck you to an ex girlfriend, right there. Well, and I like the <laughs> fact that she calls him pathetic and says you couldn't even save your girlfriend. And wah, wah. right, it's kind of a nice like, hey, you're this is the spirit of Evil Dead of them like tormenting and taunting you. Oh yeah. Um, and then he goes tumbling down the stairs into the basement where once again he is like wait but i thought there was gonna be something that would save me down here wait a second hold up and there is a shot of the these weights where there's this bright light (laughs) shining on them it it might as well have like handel's messiah playing as he as he looks at these weights and he says that's right there's only one thing that will save me my muscles and then does a straight up Lou Ferrigno out of this shirt as he just flexes and it starts to rip around his well-toned but not overly bulgy body (laughs) man he he hulks out he he does like a uh, he does like a like a stretch Armstrong hulk out like real small scale hulking I love him yeah, I mean, again, he's clearly not doing steroids or anything. No, no, no. This is all natural, baby. One eight, like one hundred percent Kobe beef right here, babe. Yeah, look out. <laughs> it's but it's just so silly because when you see him go into this like bodybuilder pose as he's showing off his muscles, again, you're like, you look like you work out, but. I I would kill for that body. I would kill for that. A hundred percent. Nobody's saying that the man is not in shape. Right, right. I mean, I I'd go for. I want Roy Scheider's body from Marathon Man. Everyone's oh. like, oh yeah, oh yeah, Marathon Man, Dustin Hoffman. I'm like, fuck that. Look at freaking string bean, like scary Bruce Lee rippling muscle uh, Roy Scheider in that movie. He yeah. looks dangerous. I would I would trade a finger to have the body of Lee Van Cleef. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Just to, just to have my shirt off in public and not hurt children's feelings, yeah. you know? Yeah. What what where do I find the Richard Jekyll workout? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a man in a speedo. Yeah. That's the man I want to see. Uh-huh. He's 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 in love with sharks. They're, sharks are his best friends in that movie. He likes grizzlies. God bless him. Um, <laughs> oh, man. I miss Richard Jekyll every day. 
is great. Uh, anyway, yeah. the one the one liners. That's the other thing with Shinji. Now that he's all uh, he's he's ready to tackle his foes, the the one liners, the the uh, Bruce Willis esque uh-huh. and Bruce Campbell esque. Uh, one-liners are almost stepping on top of each other. He's got so many of them. It's so cute. Dude, he... Oh my, I can't tell you how wonderful I found it when he said, <laughs> there is one thing that will save me, my muscles. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get a cutaway from that to Mika and the lumpy-faced demon lady just eating pieces of Mizuguchi off the ground like up to and including you know like the the demon lady just grabbing the half of his skull that remains from Mizuguchi and just chomping on it like it's a cantaloupe Bowing down man uh, and then Shinji appears backlit all to hell yes w- holding like a bar with barbells and starts twirling it around like it's a pair of nunchucks it's it's stunning it's stunning and yeah. and again you know aping uh the, the the evil dead movies it's just him being like hey assholes come get some and then there's a big fight where he just whacks these things in the skull with barbells and hurls like, weights at them and stuff. I get the jumping off point, which is Evil Dead, but the the bodybuilder aspect is completely original. Out of I mean, unless there's some weird Japanese TV series we've never heard of where there was this muscle man. I mean, this is like how in the world other than his bringing his interests into a movie that's and making his hobby or his you know his lifestyle you know fit the plot i don't know work with what you got i guess i mean that's got to be it right that that shinichi fukuzawa just was into bodybuilding and was right. like, what can I what can I bring to this movie that doesn't cost anything oh my muscles my secret power right that i tell everybody about who will listen yeah because i think that the character of of shinji and shinichi uh fukuzawa not that different i think both of them have a real laissez-faire attitude towards life as a as a whole um but yeah so he pounds the face of this lumpy demon lady and says don't take it personal you're just not my type and so you think she's down but you know give it a minute because we gotta have uh, a pop up at the end but then Mika stabs him in in the ankle with the knife and it's very reminiscent of the the uh, pencil in yeah. the tendon like it's real similar to that but then he <laughs> Unlike the original Evil Dead, Shinji then goes to the wound on Mika's neck and sucks out the demon venom like she got bitten by a poisonous demon snake. Unbelievable. And just spits it out. And then, like, there's this superimposed image where she goes from evil to okay. Yep. Which is also fantastic. God, the more I talk about this movie, the more I love it. It is so... It, it's so bonkers. It makes me think, like, he was bummed out that Ash never got the girl. Yeah. In my version, he's going to get the keep that sweet old girlfriend of his. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, oh, speaking of that wound, you mentioned it earlier. Her, the bite wound where they do... It's like all the holes of the teeth uh-huh. that the teeth have made... And they're just pumping blood through it. Yeah. And then later they're just pumping like pus through it. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I just, ah, it's so cool. Yeah. It's so freaking cool, man. So Mika is passed out, but apparently unpossessed. And the demon lady now comes back, even though she's even pulpier than she was to begin with. And so Shinji 
takes in a very tense scene, Richard, you has to use like a Phillips wrench to get the, Holy shit. the weights off the end of the pole, which yep, he yep. does. And then fires it like an arrow from the strap on his bag into the face of this demon lady. I, I thought he had one of those stretchy, springy, like tension bar things. Yeah. And I thought he was using that as the bow. And then the arrow was, of course, the barbell without the weights on it. But none of that makes a lick of sense. Yeah. Not even, even trying to like name the things doesn't work. <laughs> it, it's, oh, it's so weird. And so the demon lady gets impaled through the head, but she starts crawling down the length of it to try to get to through her him. mouth. Yeah. Through her mouth. <laughs> and he's, he's trying to get to the shotgun. His, you know, obviously his ankle is all busted. Um, and also the demon lady is shooting intestine out at him. Yeah. Which was, that was like the biggest effect one of the probably the most time consuming effects in the movie was that shit getting that to actually work but that hey that, there was your possibilities for uh some hentai right there but no it's just guts just guts <laughs> and so the the demon lady is trying to make her way to mika and saying like give me your body and at that point shinji finally gets hold of the shotgun and shoots the this demon lady about 115 times uh, yeah if i'd watch this with my father-in-law he'd be flipping out he's a bullet counter it's and that shot that shotgun might as well have a big clip on it like one of those assault shotguns <laughs> and he gives it one final see you in hell baby and then shoots her in the head and then the head explodes and blood goes everywhere He's covered in it. Mika gets some blood right in the face. And, you know, we we have saved the day. Uh, Mika is now okay. Yeah. And they make their way outside as the demon lady melts. And, you know, they head outside and they're like, everything's okay. And then we get one final look at the house and it's that got final stinger yeah and you got like a you know a door opens and you see an eyeball so oh man like like i love that's one of my favorite tropes in japanese horror and the first time i've seen that is in um one of those 100 yokai movies mm -hmm. where there's just a giant ghost mm -hmm. there's just a ghost that happens to be giant and there's a manga that i've read that i love called male m-a-i-l and in that there's a ghost girl that's in a house but her whole face just to give you scale her whole face takes up a doorway so the first time you see this ghost leaning over somebody she's the ghost is large enough to eat that person in one bite and i love that they went for that like when they show that window of the house and they superimpose or and that little effect shot of the ghost it's a huge ghost like like it's like it's not like a little stinger it's a big stinger that's freaking cool man i love that that idea i, I wish they'd do that in an american one of those uh one of those uh conjuring movies just have a for no reason i mean everything in those movies is for no reason yeah but yeah. have a giant ghost it's like a just like oversized like it's and Haosu even does it too, where the ghost just happens to be bigger than like because they're their spirit their, their spirit, so they can do anything. Go ahead and go nuts with it. You yeah, know? it's man, it's beautiful. I like. <clears throat> I really, really adore bloody mu muscle bodybuilder in hell. Yeah, um, it is. It's extremely silly. <laughs> But knowingly so. But the thing that I love about it is just it's so it's just so creative, you know? Like even though it's ripping off a couple of movies, uh more than that, I I think you're right. I think Dead Alive or Brain Dead, depending on where you're from, 
Um, but I think, you know, uh, Fukuzawa had seen plenty of that too. And, yeah. and was borrowing some from that. But even for all the stuff he borrowed, there is stuff that he does that is just, it's silly and fun and goopy and all of that stuff. And, you know, for a movie that is, again, like 63, 62 minutes long, like, you pack a lot of living into that hour. Like, if all movies yeah. could be so economical. <laughs> the the two scenes that, that uh, two little moments that we, we didn't catch were, uh, one was his hairspray can. Uh, Shinji, because he's so in love with himself, he's fixing his hair in that one scene. He has a, the uh, little tiny can of hairspray which is not an aerosol. It is a spray bottle. Mm -hmm. So when he uses it to blow up um, uh, Mizuguchi's corpse earlier in the movie, (laughs) it it like, it blows up like it was contents under pressure. You know, (laughs) he throws the can and then shoots it and it explodes. Like it's a red barrel in a video game. I thought you were going to say a Red Bull in a video game. That too. Gives you wings. Gives you wings, bruh. A red uh, barrel full of Red Bull. The other great moment is that Mika gets some hits in. And I looked away from this movie for a second. And Lieta's watching this with me and she's like, whoa, she just rabbit punched freaking that that head lo- that dude's head in the face a bunch of times. Like I'm like, nice. Yeah. I, I I don't look away from this movie for a second. Once it gets going for this finale, you will miss something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but yeah. No, this, this is great stuff. This is made. This movie's made with love and and made with something like totally unique. Uh, there's so much goopy, goopy gore. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, I I love that found footage kind of look to it by accident, you know. And I love the grudge, uh, like the the Ringu Juan kind of curse stuff that's in it. That's it's so funny because that stuff feels tacked on. Mm-hmm. in a good way mm-hmm. like in a good way but that stuff because none of that's an evil dead you know that's as foreign as it can get from the evil dead but it, here it is love it yeah it, it's a terrific movie uh I, <clears throat> i'm glad that it's so widely available and and you know like if if you're listening to this and you have shutter and you want to see something that's just ridiculous like the first I mean, it's only an hour long. Like the first fifteen minutes might have some ramp up as, as far, as, but even then, like even that car trip where Shinji is just like, "All right, whatever, brother, I'll just be here drinking my energy drinks, and you guys talk about ghosts and goblins and whatever the hell." Uh, I don't believe in none of that. Um, I don't know why he's got a southern accent, but you know, Shinji, Shinji, do what Shinji do. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, once it gets going, it it's you know it does feel homemade in the best possible way you know it's it's kind of how i feel about the movie winter beast like i love i was gonna mention that yeah i love winter beast because it it doesn't make any sense but it's got moments in that movie that i will never ever forget and it it's completely done on the cheap but it's done done on on the cheap by people who gave a shit and yeah and Fukuzawa gave a shit and you can tell that in every every frame of this movie he is trying to make something that isn't just a cheap horror movie right and I I love it I love it and and while I'm at it I I love you oh I love you I thought of those two movies I referenced earlier oh yes there's two Japanese horror movies that are under an hour that you can kind of find if you do a little internet sleuthing and the first one's called uh, Gaki Dama from 1985. Uh, it's 54 minutes, and all I can tell you is that it looks bonkers. I have not watched it yet. Okay. Um, but it's very, very gory uh, guy who uh, infected by a demon, and uh, it's just really strange. The monster is really odd and everything. Um, another one that came out two years later is called. I have it in my files. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> I heard some people have it on their computers. Yeah. Uh, it's Conton, C-O-N-T-O-N. But in uh, on, on IMDb, it comes up as 
Jushin Densetsu. And it claims to be about a boy's nightmares about being stalked by a demon slowly transform into a terrifying reality. And there's nothing but goopy gore in all of the VHS artwork. So Great. And I thought of a third one. Okay. Another one that's... Uh, this one's 36 minutes called Biotherapy. Oh, well, I like um, the sound of from, that. This is 1986. Nasty Japanese gore fest about a group of Japanese scientists being stalked and viciously butchered by a creepy looking alien who's wearing a trench coat. So yeah, these little movies are out there and they're not that hard to find if you just use the Googleizer. Yeah, we might have to do a roundup of those. Of just like, let's do I, a couple of them. I need, obviously, I need an excuse to watch them because yeah. they've been hovering around my consciousness or semi consciousness. Right, look, semi consciousness is one of my favorite states of being. It's, as a wise person once said, it's the best of both worlds, alive and unconscious. Yeah, yeah give me some, uh, some al pastor tacos and i'll i'll see you in the semi-conscious <laughs> yeah and, I, uh, <laughs> I got an enchilada waiting for me after this and that oh, man. that's just gonna put me on the couch i uh, this is unrelated to anything we've talked about but before we recorded i took a nap <laughs> uh because Ooh. that's the kind of life i live and uh woke up with like drool coming out like i napped so hard this wasn't like a delicate little cat nap where i came to like i came to and my girlfriend was like are you okay and i was like well and she was like you were really snoring like you were going after it and not only did i snore that much i like i drooled at everything i, I drooled on the dog is that <laughs> this is well, how passed also- out i was so I don't know if it's the cold weather or if it's just we got a very uh, human centric kitten. Um, we have a kitten that really loves to sleep with us. Like mm-hmm. she has to be in bed with us, passed out. And I, I don't know how she's sleeping through the night, almost the entire night. You know, I'll, I'll forgive her that five in the morning. Like, hey, hey, what's up? Yeah. Is the day starting now? <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's play. You know, yeah. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but like. Man, I'm telling you, there's just something about waking up and realizing there's a six pound kitten that you could have killed with your big old body. Like, like, man, like, man, I hope you can claw me awake because if I roll over on you, you're a dead man. <laughs> the so in our bed, there are two animals that sleep in the bed with us, and there's some pets as well. And, right. <laughs> <laughs> well played but no so there's there's johnson the dog who usually curls up oh, at the foot of the bed so he's johnson. mostly okay but uh every now and again he gets needy and just decides that he is going to sleep flush against my body like <laughs> like a furry lover and <laughs> the the other one though is a cat named zombie and oh, oh, zombie, zombie is about 18 pounds that's a big that's a big baby. It's a big cat. Like she's on <laughs> she's been on a diet. She's lost about three pounds. She was bigger before. Oh that. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she's lost weight. But that cat will uh my girlfriend refers to them as the Yentas because they like to sleep both between us to keep us, you know, <laughs> pure and chaste. <laughs> 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 oh man that's great so that, that's keeping you honest i like it yeah so um <laughs> yeah god forbid we kick both of them out of the room uh but yeah yeah, yeah. so i i feel you yeah. but i there's something i really love about waking up in the morning like when my head pops up like johnson's head also pops up he's like oh time to go we doing this you are you fucking around? It's I mean, time. you just are, is this just you pissing <laughs> or are we going? Right. And uh, but I adore it. I love I love having an animal sleep. I like I know a lot of people are like I refuse to allow an animal in in my bed because yeah, they're filthy, yeah. disgusting animals. But I'm like, eh, aren't we all? I've requested the Leah to crate me at night, <laughs> just for her <laughs> own. For, for her own pleasure or safety. Yep. Nope. All right. Well, um, hey, man. This was, as per usual, a delight. Thank you so much for... Oh, look at that. There's a cat. Yeah, this is the big baby. Yeah. This one is 
three times the weight of the little kitten I showed you earlier, but she's scared to death of the new kitten. Yeah. She's in, totally intimidated. She's slinking all over this house like, where is it? What the fuck is that? Yeah, since since me and my girlfriend moved in together, we have between us five cats. Wow. Wow. You know, you only see two or three of them at any given time because there, there are a couple that keep to the shadows. Right. <laughs> 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 but when I go to feed them, sure enough, there they <laughs> are. yeah, yeah, and and every now and again, I'm like, wait a second, when did we get six? Hey, you get out of here! <laughs> You're a neighbor cat. Um, <laughs> but anyway, what I was gonna say is, I I thank you so much for doing this. I always have the absolute best time. I love to be here when we we get together and talk about this stuff. So, uh, you were taking a hiatus. Is there anything you want to pimp other than your? relaxation and your peace of mind oh man yeah hello this is the doom show we'll be back in 2024 i've got we got big plans i just needed a, a little breather but uh yeah as for other stuff i'm still doing the doomed movie thon youtube channel i'm fairly regular with you know just being regular yeah. now fairly regular with my video output there been working my way through my giallo collection uh, just showing off all my cool crap that would be a child's college fund. Um, I'm in the process of writing a Giallo Meltdown 2. So nice. my book about watching too many Giallo movies is, of course, on Amazon uh, for people to help me reap the rewards of my evil self-publishing ways. But yeah, Giallo Meltdown Volume 2. I, I have actually found more than enough movies to, to fill a second volume of me torturing myself, watching like 15 movies in a weekend like a goofball there, there's <laughs> nothing of like there's no better way to take a break than to write a book yeah yeah i'm gonna i'm, I'm saving my my saving my brain from podcast editing and then destroying it with book editing like, yeah. a, like a like a cool dude <laughs> right yeah. yeah there's nothing more relaxing than reading what you've written and thinking i'm an idiot uh, the most grateful I would be to anyone hearing this, um, I have a music channel that I've been uh, putting a lot of work into. It's called The Slow Wizard. Uh, my my friend nicknamed me that. That was my rap name in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then one day I was rewatching Big with Tom Hanks. And he, at the beginning of the movie, he's playing that video game where he's fighting the slow wizard. Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, is that where you got that? He's like, yeah. People think I'm really original, but I, I just steal shit from movies. And I'm like, <laughs> I just love That's, big. <laughs> yeah. I, I, big is great. Whatever. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, the slow wizard is my channel on YouTube and it's just me making, um, usually ambient, like relaxing stuff. I get a little weird sometimes. Sometimes I don't know what relaxing is, but <laughs> if you guys would check that out, it's, it's pretty weird. All right. Excellent, man. Well, everyone will subscribe to the slow wizard on YouTube. And if you Yay, don't, I, I will it. find you. And I will kill you. <laughs> Please. Um, <laughs> with my muscles. Uh, all <laughs> right. Thanks, Richard. And uh, I'll be right back to close the show. And there you have it. There is the end of our conversation about Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder in Hell. As you can tell, we both really, really liked this movie and, and had a blast with it. And uh, as Richard promised, we have been looking at some of the sort of gonzo short uh, splatter fest films from Japan that we discussed on the show. And I think we're probably going to rejoin to do something about that, or maybe the Junji Ito series on Netflix, or I mean, who knows? There are a number of options, but we'll have Richard back uh, sooner rather than later. And be sure that you're uh, checking out his YouTube channel as well. Um, and for next time, we will be doing another uh, found footage full episode this time on a movie that has been likened to the movie Be My Cat, which if you've never seen that found footage movie, uh, it is at the very least memorable. So this is supposed to be uh, along those lines, kind of crazy in that respect. So we'll see. I haven't watched it yet, but that's the next thing we're going to do. Uh, I might watch it today, as a matter of fact, after I finish recording this. Uh, but... I just want to say, again, thanks for sticking around for all the solo shows. I hope you enjoyed them. Um, I'm planning on doing a lot more guest work in the uh, coming months this year. So uh, it'll be a little less me by myself and a little more me with other people. 
and uh, whichever way you prefer it, uh, I appreciate you sticking around to listen. So that is it for this time. I will see you in a week and thank you as always for joining the Dark Parade. We'll see you next time. <laughs>